I don't care. I'm leading here today with, you know, a really high grade CC or um, the coin of my dreams, the 9S VDB uh, wheat cent. Uh, I need it today. I don't care what I have to pay. And for us, that's a little bit different. We're reworking it and move, making it work for us. So we just left uh, Colorado, well, we're still leaving Colorado now, but uh, we had a lot of great coins uh, that we found on the second day, mainly a lot of tone coins. So um, many people have been asking about tone coins and uh, giving my perspective on tone coins. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about every tone coin that we found and then uh, giving you guys a breakdown uh, by coin, uh, what I think of it, um, and also some helpful links to figure out how to judge if a coin is artificial or if it's uh, naturally toned. So uh, stay tuned guys and enjoy the video. Hey everybody. So second day coin show Denver uh, coin expo was a success. Uh, most of the time when you're doing coin shows, uh, either early bird or the, the first day of the actual show is is the best. It's kind of always a toss up. Uh, for this one, uh, it was definitely the second day or the first day of the coin show for many people. Uh, let me just break down a few coins for you guys today, show you some cool stuff, give you guys a little bit of a, a perspective of what I've been running into at the at the show. Uh, but this uh, is an 1878S MS63 proof like Morgan dollar. Um, it is in a Rattler holder, which gives it that uh, boost in premium. If you guys can find better dates in Rattlers with PL designations, you're going to make some money um, most of the time. And what I found with this one is someone just threw it uh, in, in one of their, uh, you know, in one of their booths. And they said, hey, you know, I just want proof like money for it. And I gave them proof like money for it. Um, and what ended up happening is that, you know, I took it home. I threw an extra premium for that Rattler uh, holder. And it ended up doing pretty well. Uh, sold a little bit over retail, I believe. Um, but just a phenomenal coin. Um, very lucky to have uh, something like this. Many of the many of these coins are either overpriced or uh, you just can't touch them. So uh, pretty neat coin. And we're starting off with another, also another really rare holder. Not a really rare, but something that uh, people like. Which is the 18, uh, which is the OGH holder, um, but what's held in that OGH holder is this 1883O uh, MS63 dimple. Um, fields are frosty. Looks like they have some uh, toning or a little haze in the fields, but it kind of adds this nice, cool blue uh, feature to it. Um, found this at a case, um, and what we're going to talk about a little bit in this video is kind of um, when you need something for your inventory in terms of maybe a dimple or a tougher date or something. Uh, you're going to want to have that slot available in terms of having this piece of inventory there. So, just for example, I have this 1883O available. I sell this one um, in Dimple. I'm going to want to look for another one just so in case someone reaches out again, this coin is available for you. Um, and so that's kind of what uh, my business model is trying to move into. You know, sell a 93S or sell, you know... Uh, 95s you're gonna need something that fills back in that hole so when someone calls you someone uh, emails you someone uh, needs that coin maybe from your shop it's gonna be available um, and there's kind of two perspectives as well when you're uh, working with coins um, for you you're just trying to find um, the coin for the best price so say you with all the knowledge you have you walk through a coin show you find it for the best price um, and you buy it because you can make some money at it, or you know it's a good investment. I mean, I'm going to say investment lightly, um, but you're gonna, you know it's a good deal. Um, and so what you do is you buy it and you either sell it or you add it to your collection. Some people walk through a coin show where they're looking for a 42 over one, or they're looking for a 95 ORS. Many of these people don't care what the price is. Many people just look for the, the rarity, the date, um, what grade and condition it's in. They don't look at price guy. They don't look at anything. They just need something for their collection. They're willing to spend the money that they need to do to do that, and so that's what people kind of work towards and look at. Um, 
but so for dealers it's like I said it's a little bit different so when you have something available um, even if you need a little bit more for it or you paid up for it um, there's gonna be those collectors there that, that want to pay the money they don't care they need that coin um, and they'll 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 extend themselves to you to get it and that's what like I said that's what many dealers do um, so I can't buy some from some dealers because they put ask for over retail stuff uh, over retail pricing for coins and they know they'll get it because they'll have someone that comes to the show and they said, I don't care, I'm leading here today with, you know, a really high grade CC or um, the coin of my dreams, the 9S VDB uh, wheat cent. Uh, I need it today. I don't care what I have to pay. And for us, that's a little bit different. We're reworking it and move, making it work for us. Uh, we're finding coins so like if there was a 9S VDB there, I'd buy it if it was the right price. It's always the price and the condition and a lot of other variables, but um, it's just something for you guys to think about in terms of reworking the system. This is a 1942 over one. Found this at a booth. We sold. We bought one the first day, sold it the, the second day, and we needed another hole. So this is the coin that we had. Um, I don't know what the FS. I think that's just you know it's just saying it's an overdate or a double die. Um, but you're seeing that nice overdate there. Um, and the prices on key date dimes have been shooting up like crazy. Um, so, uh, you know, something that you should definitely have um, in terms of an inventory uh, list, but also maybe something that you might want as a collector. Prices are always going to be shooting up for these things. Um, take a little dip here and there, but overall, the coin market, in terms of what's happening in the world, has been uh, kind of boosting us in terms of uh, where, where the retail side is going. It's going up and up and up. Um, but a really nice coin. On the second day, I was waiting for um, a dealer. He had a lot of tone stuff, um, and I also found a lot of tone stuff because I asked people for certain things. Most of the first day, I was looking for key dates, better things like that. Um, but the second day, I was looking for things that I want to take risks on, make you make unique uh, buys. And so uh, we found kind of coins like this. Um, this is an 1884.0. Uh, MS62 Morgan dollar it has some toning to it. It's a nice middle of the road toner for a collector that's starting out. Um, you know, it's got a nice uh, band of blue, pink, green, everything that you might need. Um, I found this kind of uh, hidden within a whole group of tone Morgans at this table that they haven't put out. Um, but I got this for an affordable price. Um, can give it to somebody else for an affordable price. Get them their feet in the water in terms of tone Morgans, and that's kind of what I uh, I kind of preface my. Uh, toning spree you're buying on um, the affordable side to get someone intrigued with it and also the higher end side somebody that's looking for coins that um, really speak to them really give them that wow factor and you're about to see those coins right now let's see here so um, we actually found two Morgan dollars which we were waiting on um, from the first day he left pretty early and this coin blows me away just because of how deep the color is and you could just tell so let me show you guys um, and line them up for you um, you can kind of see the color fading on this one um, it, it's not as deep not as hard not as kind of um, you know not as appealing in terms of eye appeal and so if I asked you what coin you wanted today which one would it be it would be the one on the right because it has that really beautiful toning it's deep um, and they call this, I guess, the double rainbow, which is pretty unique. Um, but I bought this one for a little bit higher of a price because I know someone might uh, be interested, is looking for something uh, of this caliber. And you could just see, I mean, this this coin is just, I mean, I think it's magnificent. I think it's beautiful. It really needs a true view. So I might send that in if this coin doesn't sell. Um, but like I said, you could just see this really deep pink here, this ding, deep blue, deep gold. It's just, wow, I, I love this coin. Um, I, I wouldn't mind even if I held it for a month. I, I just It's just an amazing coin. Um, it really speaks to me, and it's going to speak to somebody else. So let me show you guys another great toner that we found. So this is an 1884 Morgan Dollar. Um, it's going to have that kind of same similar uh, toning progression, and so you, know, you can spot stuff pretty easily. Um, if it's an artificially toned coin, but especially in a holder, it's already been authenticated, which is nice. But we're going back to, you know, the money color here, the gold, the blue, and it has that kind of orange to fade out where a Morgan kind of sat on it, uh, moved over time possibly. Um, this coin is really nice because it has that kind of full spectrum and it's kind of extended. The blue is a little bit more rare. 
Um, the gold's a little bit more rare as well. MonsterToneMorgans.com will give you guys a bunch of insight on, into what to buy. Um, but uh, this coin also, you know, I think that it had really deep toning to it. Um, it gave it has that eye appeal that I like. Um, it doesn't have that kind of faded look to it. If it had that faded look to it, I don't know if I'd purchase it. Uh, I did buy another one with a faded look, but it was for uh, the right price. So that's kind of something that you guys have to look out for. Um, and stuff on this, stuff with this, if you're not very familiar with it in terms of selling and buying and have kind of a customer lineup, you can end up sitting on this stuff for a little bit of an extended period of time if you don't know what to do with it. So um, just a little bit of a fair warning for you guys, but it is something that um, is overlooked from, by many num numismatists and a lot of uh, dealers that I don't understand it. And you can make a lot of money um, just on the toning factor of the, of the coin hobby. Up next, I want to show you guys this really beautiful uh, 1964 uh, uh, penny that we found. Um, we bought this at um, a table. What what I do when it's a little bit of a darker room, I take my phone, turn the light on, and I kind of drag it across the pennies or drag it across the Morgans or drag it across the Buffalo Nickels or whatever else. Um, and if you see something that pops out with like this kind of toning, um, then you can you can see it you can ask about it you can put it in a better light but sometimes when someone walks by a table they see all these slabs they don't know what this they can't see anything they can't see the color pop out and so they end up just walking over it never buying it um, but this coin has really nice deep purples has this green on the face um, it might have been at the end of a roll I'm not too sure because um, a lot of this side isn't toned at all which is which kind of you know begs begs the question of if it's set at the end of a roll got some a little bit of gunk here uh, gunk by the back of his uh, head and gunk um, above uh, the, the Lincoln here and so uh, the Lincoln Memorial and so that kind of what added to that kind of um, lower grade and also the strike is a little bit weak you can kind of see um, you know not it's not a full detail on the chin here and uh, on the cheekbone so um, but still beautifully toned coin um, and if you're in a dark room, drag your phone with your light across all the coins. See, um, you know, some something with Tony might pop out at you, and it might be for pretty cheap, and something that you can make some money on as well. So, um, let me show you uh, this beautiful V nickel. This all this is also what I did. Um, so, I, I kind of what, what was interesting is I I took my phone across uh, a table, and they had this V nickel there. I love this V-Nickel. I love the, the toning on it. It has this green and pink and blue um, color to it. And I don't know, I've never actually held a really nice V-Nickel before um, with this kind of toning to it. And you know, when I held it over the light with, with my phone, the, when the guy held it in hand, he's like, oh, that's just a V-Nickel. I'll take off 25 bucks for you. I'll get rid of it. Um, but he didn't really recognize the toning part of it because he didn't bring it over to the light. And so that that alone as well is just people want to get rid of stuff but they don't really understand what they're getting rid of um, and a coin like this you can ask over retail for because you well, even if you look at the the PCGS true views and the PCGS uh, uh, what they have in terms of top pop they have the you know they have different coloring to it they don't have the coloring like this which makes it extremely interesting because you just don't see coins with this toning on it very often up next, we're going to show you something we found at the value bin <laughs> at the show, which is pretty cool. I think, like, we have a short time coming right now, or, like, I guess for the last quarter, if you guys send in, like, 10 or more coins, you'll receive something like this in the mail. So many people are after this right now. It's the 35th anniversary. Um, it's just something cool. And, uh, you know, I wanted to show this off. Maybe I'll do a giveaway with this. Let me know if you guys would be interested in a giveaway like this down below. I'd be happy to help you guys out and maybe send you guys something like this or maybe something similar. I'm not too sure. Um, but it's pretty cool. I like it. And last but not least, uh, we're going to show you guys uh, this dime. Um, and you're going to see some beautiful toning here. Uh, when I put it in the light, it's got this green hair, uh, this pink to it. Um, this is a little bit of a rare coin just because uh, you don't see this color too often on, uh, on dimes. And uh, this coin is pretty flashy, pretty deep. Um, and so what I'm going to do with this coin most likely is get a true view for it. Um, just because it's a lot more marketable that way. But I hope you guys enjoy a little bit of a perspective on what we found today. What we um, 
discovered on the second day of the Coin Expo. And I hope you guys uh, take some stuff to heart and go use it. You know, go use it at your coin show or a coin show that, or, or at a coin shop. Anything that you guys um, apply your mind to, I think you guys will do well at. But thank you guys again for taking a look at these coins. And let's roll to the outro. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment what you learned, and we will see you in the next video.